Assalamu alaikum, this is Samira again and today inshallah I'm going to talk to you about Iblis. Do you remember who he is? He is the king of devils. He is the king of shayateen. He is a really bad jinn. But was he always this bad? No, he used to be a very good jinn. He used to live up in the heavens close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to be around angels. What happened? that Allah started hating him so much and he became the king of devils. What is this story? I'm going to mention inshallah this story to you from Quran. Um, I'm going to recite the verses of Surah Al-Hijr and um, starting from verse number 28. And when your Lord said to angels, I will create a human being out of clay from an altered black mud and when I have proportioned him and breath into him of my soul, then fall down in fall down to him in prostration. What is Allah saying? Allah is saying that I'm going to create a mankind. This is going to be a new kind of creation. Until now, no one, none of the angels or the jinn had any idea about this new creation of a mankind. So this is an announcement Allah has made. Then he's saying he's going to proportion his body, he's going to make his body and he's going to breathe soul into him. That means he's going to give life to that body. Do you know who is this first man Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about? Yes, it's Adam alayhi salam, the father of mankind. And Allah then Allah is saying that after he has life, Allah wants everyone up there to prostrate in front of Adam alayhi salam. This prostration is not a sign of worship. Allah doesn't want them to worship Adam alayhi salam. This is a sign of respect. Respect of Allah's superior uh, creation because Allah said Adam human is the best of the best creation. So Allah wants respect from everybody for his creation. Now let's continue with the story. So the angels prostrated all of them entirely. Except Iblis, he refused to be among those who prostrated. Wow, Iblis didn't listen to Allah. Allah said, O oh Iblis, what is the matter with you that you are not with those who prostrated? He said, I need you to listen to these verses very carefully. Iblis said, Never would I prostrate to a human whom you created out of clay from an altered black mud. Think deeply about these verses. He is refusing to do what Allah asked him to do. And then he is giving a very lame reason. First of all, he shouldn't be giving a reason. And then he gives a reason. And, and, and his reason is that this human is created out of mud. And what is Iblis created of? Iblis is created of fire. So he's saying that I am a better creation than him. When does a person disobey someone superior to him? Let me give you an example to try and make you explain. Now, if your neighbor's child was to come to you and tell you that tomorrow, God forbids, inshallah, it's never going to happen, that the child is going to come and tell you that the moon is going to collide with earth and you have to stay indoors, otherwise you will die. Are you going to listen to that child or will you go and continue with, the, with your work? Most probably, you are not going to obey that child and stay back home. You will continue with your work. But if the NASA scientists were to predict this uh, collision of moon and earth, and if they were to advise you to be at home, and this prediction came on um, news channels, TV channels, internet, uh, newspapers everywhere, then what do you think what, what would happen? I think most of the people will stay back home because they trust the intellect of NASA scientists. They, they trust their, uh, their intellect, they trust their calculations. So they will try to stay safe and stay at home and the offices and schools might close. Don't you think so? So just like that, Iblis's disobedience is his disbelief. Why did he disobey Allah? Because he did not trust enough in Allah's knowledge. He did not trust enough in Allah's wisdom. He did not trust enough in Allah's intellect. He thought 
that he knows more than Allah. That's why he said, I'm not going to do what you're asking me to do. And though Allah told him that it's a, it's a good creation, you have to show respect to it. But what did Iblis say? He said, I'm, I am better than him. He's made of clay. So he thought that he knows more than Allah. Was it smart of Iblis? I don't think so. I, was, I think he was being very stupid. <laughs> you know, Iblis knew that uh, Allah is the one who made Iblis. Allah is the one who made the angels. Allah is the one who made Adam salam. Then why was he even questioning? You know, you don't, cre you don't question the creator of a product because the one who made the product knows his product the best, right? So... Uh, so he did a he did a really big mistake by not listening to Allah, and okay, coming back just to to the, to the verses, Allah said, "Then get out of it. Indeed, you are expelled." So Allah is angry now. He's saying that you cannot show your arrogance here. You cannot do this here. You cannot disobey me up here in the heavens. Go out of here. Get out of here. Allah is angry. And indeed upon you is the curse until the day of judgment. Oh my God, Allah cursed him until the day of judgment. <sighs> Iblis talks back. Iblis said, my Lord, then reprieve me until the day of resurrection. Instead of being sorry and accepting his mistake and correcting himself, he is asking Allah for more time. He's saying, okay, you want me to get out of here? I will get out of here. But then give me more time. How much more time? A really long time until the day of resurrection, until everyone dies and gets back again. Allah said, so indeed you are of those who are reprieved. So Allah granted him his wish. Allah gave him a very, very long life until the day and the time which is well known. Wow. So despite him doing all these wrong things and asking Allah for extra time, now Iblis gets back to Allah. He's still arguing. Now he says, Iblis said, My Lord, because you have put me in error, I will surely make disobedience attractive to those on earth and I will mislead them all. So here Iblis, in his mind, he's thinking that I got into this trouble because of this mankind, because of this human. And he's thinking in his mind that Allah thinks that mankind is better than me. I will prove to Allah that this man, these men are not good. Not men as in only men, men and women. The mankind is not good enough. So he is telling Allah that I will go back on earth and I will make them disobey you. I will make all the wrong things attractive to people. Isn't that happening nowadays? Um, if you think about it, I'll just give you a few examples, but you think about it. Sometimes we feel thrilled, people feel thrilled to break rules. Though inside it blackens our heart, but people have the thrill feeling. Why is this? Because Iblis is trying to make bad things attractive. People go to discos, people do all the bad things, people do drugs, people smoke. People do all these bad things and it is Iblis who is making these things attractive. And um, there's another thing I want to say that this was the first time Iblis disobeyed Allah. And don't we often see people around us, they make mistakes and they try to cover it up. They say that, okay, so what? I don't wear a hijab. At least I pray five times a day. So what? I smoke, even though it's haram. At least I give my zakat on time. People try to cover up on their mistakes, but we cannot do that. We have to stop ourselves from doing what Allah has prohibited for us. And we have to do every single thing that Allah asked us to do. And the story doesn't end here. I will continue very soon. Take care. Salaam alaikum.